Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his love has no end. It is better to take refuge in the Lord. than to trust in men. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. I will thank you for you have answered And you are my saviour. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. It is the work of the Lord. a marvel in our eyes. Blessed in the name of the Lord is he who comes. We bless you from the house of the Lord. You are my God, I thank you. My God, I praise you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his love has no end. Hello, Monsignor Daniel McHugh. My reflection for the fourth Sunday of Easter, Vocation Sunday. The Good Shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep. The catacombs of Rome are places of pilgrimage today, but in the early centuries of the Christian era, they were underground places of burial for those who were martyred for the faith. Gradually, the tombs had different frescoes, paintings, and the favourite was of the Good Shepherd, the image Jesus uses to describe himself in the Gospel for the fourth Sunday of Easter. When I was a student in Rome, an annual pilgrimage to the catacombs for the whole student body was a tradition. Mass was celebrated in the small oratory where the dead were brought before burial. The image of the Good Shepherd continues to appeal and even those who do not have worshipping Christian faith are inclined to choose the psalm, The Lord's My Shepherd, to be sung or said at their funeral. It is significant, then, that the Sunday on which this parable is read has become Vocation Sunday, the day on which the Church prays for vocations to the priesthood. Already as a teenager, I knew people needed to know Jesus if they were to find true happiness in life. Now, as I read the Gospel, 
I know that the image Jesus painted of himself was about how much he cared about people. Father Pollard, a Jesuit, has a series of homilies called Finding Fresh Light, and in this gospel passage he reflects on the Good Shepherd and his love for his people, many of whom are lonely and do not know his voice or lean on his love. He writes, It is sad to see them, the crowds without company, a phrase from Edward Gibbon, the 18th century historian, seeking in drink and drugs and lost weekends for some form of re replacement shepherding that will ease their spiritual emptiness and anchor their loneliness. He goes on, There's tragedy in this contemporary scene of the crowds without company on one side of the street of life and Jesus longing for their company on the other side. And he quotes Barclay, the scripture scholar's commentary on this. This is the picture Jesus drew of God. But it is even more the picture Jesus drew of himself. Jesus says in this Sunday's Gospel, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. But he goes on to say, My father loves me because I lay down my life to take it up again. Important as dying is, it is not the end of the story. We continue the Eastertide theme of rising to new life. It is the vision of handing on this good news that is at the heart of every true priestly vocation. How we do it is another thing. Clearly, it has to be underpinned by a selfless love of Jesus. That is what comes across in the preaching of St. Peter on this vocation Sunday. We read in the Acts of the Apostles, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, addressed them, the rulers, elders, and scribes, saying of Jesus risen from the dead, This is the stone rejected by you, the builders, but has proven to be the keystone. For of all the names in the world given to men, this is the only one by which they can be saved. Peter is prepared to give all for Jesus, and of course he did, dying a martyr's death. It is that type of vocation we are praying for when we pray for vocations to the priesthood this Sunday. Evidently, we need others to play a part in proclaiming the truth of Jesus too, if we are to reach a fraction of the crowd that pass by on the other side of the street. One such is the catechist, such an important ministry in the church today. They are called and tasked with sharing knowledge and understanding of our faith to young and old alike. This vocation has been highlighted in the new International Catechetical Directory, being presented in the diocese at this time. We pray that more may hear the call to priesthood, but also pray that our faithful people will hear the call to other ministries too, such as catechist, permanent deacon, and consecrated life. In my recent podcast, I speak of the vocation of marriage. Now, that is, I dare to say, a keystone, humanly speaking, to many other vocations today. <laughs>